The parotid glands are the major salivary glands in the animals and in humans we have two uh, parotid glands that are present on either side of the face and in front of the ear. So in this section we'll be covering in detail about the parotid gland. What is parotid gland? We will be studying about the parotid duct or the stensors duct. We'll be starting about the fibrous capsule that is covering this gland and about the processes what are the processes that are present, the very important processes and about the nerve supply as well. So you can see that the this purple color that is present here is the parotid gland and this is a bit of a duct you can see here. This is, is the stensus duct or the parotid duct. Now this parotid gland lies in a deep hollow below the external auditory meatus which is the uh, meatus of the ear behind the ramus of the mandible and in front of the sternocleidomast wide muscle so it has a very beautiful definition that tells you that tells you about its exact position inside the face on the posterolateral side which is it is present in front of the sternocleidomast wide muscle present behind the ramus of the mandible and below the external order because ear is at this position so a bit of the low position we have is the external auditory meatus and a bit in a, in a deep hollow area it is present facial nerve divides the gland into the superficial and deep loops so we have this facial nerve supplying this area it's going to be dividing this gland into the superficial lobes and the deep lobes uh, present here the next thing that we have here is the parotid duct or the stensus duct you can see that this is the parotid gland this yellow one is the parotid gland and this duct area is the parotid duct or the stensus duct that emerges from the anterior border of the gland so this it is originating from this is the anterior border of the gland in, in front of that we have the masseter muscle that is present so you can see that this is the stensus drug uh, duct that is originating from the anterior border of the gland it passes forward over the lateral surface of the masseter muscle so it has to be passing forward over the lateral surface of masseter muscle because masseter muscle has its lateral side and medial side so on that lateral side this duct has to be crawling or following its path and enters the vestibule of mouth upon a small papilla opposite upper second molar tooth so it enters into the vestibule of the mouth which is upon the small papilla and opposite upper second molar tooth so on on the upper second molar tooth it enters into that area so this is the parotid duct which is known as the stensus duct which emerges from the anterior border of the parotid gland and it follows or it enters on the lateral border lateral surface of the masseter muscle then entering into the vestibule of the mouth upon the small papilla opposite upper second molar tooth next we have is the fibrous capsule the capsule that is present in this region covering the parotid gland completely so with the this parotid gland is enclosed in a capsule or you can say it's a sheath dense fibrous capsule so that is very dense made up of fibrous tissue that is covering the gland because you know any everything needs the protection so this gland is really delicate it has its superior and inferior lobe because of the presence of the facial nerve so above that we have this dense fibrous capsule and a portion of fascia extending from the styloid process so this is the styloid process. I've, I have to tell you that this is the styloid process of the temporal bone. So we have a portion of the fascia that is extending from the styloid process to the angle of mandible is called the stylomandibular ligament. So from that area, this ligament is extending from the styloid process to the angle of the mandible. So this fibrous capsule is a dense fibrous capsule covering the parotid gland and we have a ligament, the stylomandibular ligament originating from the styloid bone and uh, entering into the angle of the mandible. And it separates the parotid gland from the submandibular gland and I've told you that we have three glands in, in our facial region. So this 
this has to be this ligament has to be separating or dividing the parotid gland because here we have parotid gland and below that we have submandible on the region of here we have this submandibular gland so this ligament is separating the two glands Okay, the important uh, thing here is the processes. So we have multiple processes present here. The first process is the glenoid process. This is the glenoid process. Uh, let us just study the detail of this glenoid process. It extends upward behind the temporal mandibular joint. So it has to be extending upward just behind the temporal mandibular joint in front of the external auditory meatus. This is the external auditory meatus and in front of this external auditory meatus it has to be extending upward uh, behind the temporal mandibular joint. We've studied that here we have the temporal mandibular joint. So behind that it has to be extending upward in front of the external auditory meatus of the ear. So this is the glenoid process. The next one is the facial process. This, this, you know, this whole gland is divided into multiple processes. So first process is the glenoid process. The next one is the facial process that extends entirely onto the masseter muscle. Very easy to understand. This is the anterior uh, process, which has to be a facial process that has to be entering entirely on the masseter muscle, covering the masseter muscle. We have the accessory process. So this accessory process is a small part of the facial process. Basically, accessory process is the part of the facial process. So the small part of the facial process lying along the parotid duct. You can see that this is the parotid duct and this accessory process is, is a small part of the facial process that is lying along the parotid duct. So along with that, along with this parotid duct, we have the accessory process. Then we have is the pterygoid process. So pterygoid process is present here in on the below side, on the lower side of this gland. So it extends forward from the deeper part lies between the medial pterygoid muscle and the ramus of the mandible. So between the ramus of the mandible and the medial pterygoid muscle, because it's pterygoid process, so some pterygoid thing is, should be present here. So we have the pterygoid muscle and the ramus of mandible. So it has to be lying in between these two things and it has to be extended forward from the deeper part. The last process that we have is the carotid process. We can see here that this is the carotid process that lies posterior to the external carotid artery. This red one you can see here very clearly is the external carotid artery. So behind the external carotid artery we have the carotid, uh, we have this, we have this carotid process. So we have five processes of the parotid duct, of the parotid gland, which is the clean white process. We have the facial process anterior to the masseter muscle. We have the accessory process, which is a small part of this facial uh, process and is con concerned with the, with the um, parotid duct. Yes, because we've started the parotid gland. So this is the parotid duct, which is concerned with this accessory process. Then we have is the pterygoid process present between the medial pterygoid muscle and the ramus of the mandible bone. The last process is the carotid process, which is lying posteriorly or beneath the external carotid artery. The nerve supply of this region is the parasympathetic secretromotor supply rises from the glossopharyngeal nerve. So that is arising from the glossopharyngeal nerve, uh, which is the parasympathetic secretromotor supply. The nerves reach the gland via tympanic branch, lesser petrosal nerve, Otic ganglion and the orticotemporal nerves. These are the parasympathetic and secretromotor nerve supply. Majorly, they are originating from glossopharyngeal nerve. Uh, and uh, then this nerve is going to reaching this gland via four types of the nerve, the tympanic branch. We have this lesser petrosal nerve. We have the otic ganglion and the orticotemporal nerve. So this was about section 4 where we started in detail about the parotid gland. We started about the parotid duct which is also known as the stensus duct. We also started in detail about the processes which are really important here. 
for you guys to understand the five important processes of this gland and about the nerve supply of the parotid region. So I hope it is really clear to you now. Thank you for watching scaria.com.